Donnell and Megan, and we're here on Saturday night, and where we are, it's 5, so we call it 5 o'clock live. It may be, obviously, many different times from where you are. So tonight, we're going to do an octagon table topper, and I have put a hand up, handout up on the Westerly site, and also on the So Steady site, that high, hot iron. Little miscommunication there, I'm sorry. So I just wanted you to see that the information that's on there is gonna be very helpful to you if you wanna get it downloaded. Um, so Steady site, um, Facebook site, and also the Westerly by Me site. And I just dropped it on our stream here. So okay, so well. Megan said she just dropped it on the uh, comments, so you can, should be able to find it there also. So we are going to be using today the Border Sampler set. And we are going to use a few other things, such as the outer rim tool. And so if you've never seen the outer rim tool, I'm going to introduce you to that. And it's called the Circle Works Outer Rim Tool. And some of you were with me when I did a class called Stargazing, and we did a star. And that star would be really appropriate for now, so you might want to look that back up. And um, we use this to mark it. And we're going to be able to show you today how we're gonna use this to mark with. So this is a very, very handy tool. And I mean, it's one of those things that saves you so much time and makes things so much more accurate. So I'm gonna show you the templates that come in the border sampler set. And these two at the beginning are the ones I'm gonna use today. This is the rope. And the rope comes in a lot of different sizes. But this is the one, it's two and a half by I think five, I'm not sure. But this is the one that comes in the actual sampler set. And so you can see, you can even echo after you've finished your rope design. You can echo by using this. You can use this alone to get some really interesting things going on. And so that can be done in like a little one, one and a half inch border that you just get that um, little um, swag going there. And then the other template that we are going to use today is what is called the continuous border loop. And we're going to use it in a total different way. And this again comes from playing around late last night, early this morning, whatever you want to say, with the stitching line disc. So I just had some paper out and I was playing with my stitching line disc on paper and that's how I got that um, design ready to go. So those are the two that we're going to use. Now I think the border sampler set is a very, very, very useful set. I use them as borders, but I also use them as other things. And so this, it's called five pieces because this particular one is two pieces. Now this one looks like it's been injured in a war, but it actually hasn't. It's just that these two pieces, I hold them together when I'm using this piece. And then when I just need this piece, I take it apart. And most of you recognize my ruler sticker there and how I use those. So that's considered two pieces. And then the other one is called continuous border. Did I already say that one? Mm -hmm. Continuous border loop It's a different one because this one obviously is called loop also. But anyway, is this is a three inch loop that we can use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you how these three that are not used today, and I'm not going to be using those, actually two, I'm going to show you how those are done first, and then we'll actually get into our project. So as you can see here, Megan, can you hand me a piece of the new fabric there? As you can see here, I've got some links for you. So if you want to order the border sampler set or the outer rim tool or anything else off of So Steady, if while you're on your phone or while you're on your computer, you click on this link, I would greatly appreciate it because that gets credit back to us for doing the show tonight. And then this is the pattern that we're going to be using today. So if you want to order this pattern, it's my pattern, so you can get it from me, and you can click there, and that will get you that. So you will notice that I'm not going to reference these again, but these were just from my drawings, and so I've basically left you some space to make some notes about it when we do it. So those were just from my drawings, but those are the designs that we're going to do. So... We're gonna set this down here, 
And I'm going to hope that the thread I have on here you're going to be able to see because I want to show you how these other two templates are used. So I'm smoothing that out. I need to get my chalk marker and my ruler because if you're going to do a border, you usually have to have a line to do that border. So I've got a line here and I'm going to take this template and this can be used many different ways. I like to use it like this, which some people would say is upside down, but it's only upside down once when you turn it around, then I guess it's not upside down. So what I'm going to be doing is starting right here and let's get over here where we can see. So I'm going to be starting right in this spot. It would help if I set my machine up for ruler work. So there we go, and there we go. So I set my foot down first, and I'm going to come right into that spot. And we have lined up right here the line that is a quarter of an inch up from the bottom. And so all I'm going to be doing is following around Obviously, if this was a design, I would have pulled up my threads and all of that. And we stop here and we move over. And you can see on the template, there are lines that are gonna line right back up over what we just did. We move over and it's like you're thinking, how much easier could this be? And that's absolutely the truth. How much easier could this be? Each time, no matter whether you're going left or right, you are going to have these lines to put right over what you just did. And when you pay attention to that, you will notice that right here, they just touch each other. Move it over, line it up. So those of you that might be not be able to see it, you can see how easy that is to line up right on top of that. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this and show you what I've got here. So you can see that's a pretty simple little easy border to do. And that is called the continuous loop, three inch. And I'm trying to see what's underneath what I covered up. I think it's trying to tell me that it is a certain distance wide and I can't really read it. So I've covered it up with my stable tape so I can't see that, but it's part of that. And so you could either have your line at the top you're working with. Like I said, I like to work with the line at the bottom. So either way, it's pretty much going to do the same thing. You're getting these loops, the clothes on opposite sides. So fun little border, one that you can play with. And um, I've actually done this. I, have to, I didn't mean to show you all this, but this is something that's fun because a lot of people want to know, how do I get more from my templates? So let me just make another one here, and we will show you how you can do something else with this. And you can play around on paper to get all kinds of things. So right in the middle, there's a line here. Yep, an etch line. And so I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna put that on the line. And for those of you that may just be joining us for the first time, I set my machine to a medium speed and turn my foot pedal around to the back. And that way I can completely floor my machine by flooring the foot control, but it's not going any faster than half speed. Gail wants to know, does that come in various sizes? Yes, all the templates that I'm using tonight will come in, in op other sizes. This just happens to be what's called the sampler set. So I'm going to go ahead and break that so you can see how you could do this border here just by using only half of your template. 
you could come back the other way and have a line on the other side and have the point coming in here or you could have the point coming to it. So lots of things and how do we find these things out? Again, it's playing with those um, templates with the disc and whatever. And the fun thing with this is many of you have seen us do this because I know all the educators show it. So I'm gonna just come back and show you right here. If I had stopped at that point, I could simply, I wanted to get my thread seated. I could just shift my template in and I could embellish. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing my template into my previous stitching and I'm just doing some embellishing of it. Then I would set my template back in place and go to my next one. Stop on the line, pull that in. So I'm just pulling it in so my acrylic meets my stitch from before. So you can see how you can add just that little bit of flare by just doing what I was just showing you. So that could be done on every one, every other one, you know, whatever you want. People say, do you have a place you mark on your template? I'm just bringing this, it was like that, I'm just bringing it into the edge and from there it's really just kind of guess. They don't have to all be exactly alike. So that's some fun things you can do with that template. And then the other template that I'm not using tonight, I'll show you one size of this, because this is what's called the continuous hearts, which you cannot really make a heart with it. So if you're thinking you're gonna make a heart with it, you're really not gonna make a heart because it is designed to be a continuous heart. And so it's not gonna really look like what you expect it to. And I always have to think I'm coming here and then I'm flipping. So I start down here. So when you're moving to the right, the whole template's gonna be on the right and I hope I'm saying that correctly. I'll find out here in just a minute. And this is one you have to put your tape on both sides because you're using both sides of the template. So I'm gonna come up this way. I'm gonna take this out get rid of that thread and then I'm going to put this in this way and line up down here back on my line and I'm going to come back down. I stop there, I turn it back pull this out. That's as close to what looking like a heart as you're going to get. And then I'm lining this back up. And when you get going on this, it's almost like you can do it with your eyes closed because all you're doing is flipping and flopping that. And I had somebody contact me, maybe it was one of you, not too long ago because you were trying to use this template and you didn't know that it was supposed to cross over like that. And it is, so you're just making sure that each time you're lining this back up so it's straight so it will cross over just that little bit as you come around. Can you tell us what sampler set this is again? This is the border sampler set. It hasn't been available for a couple of years and they brought it back in, I don't know, maybe six months or so ago. Time kind of has escaped me this year. But it is from Westerly, It right? is from Westerly, absolutely, it's from Westerly. And it's the border sampler set. And you can see how this creates those hearts. And the other side, when I take this out, makes the same thing, only smaller. And so since it's a set, it's the easiest way to purchase it. And I thank all of you that have purchased my set. I think um, it was just a great, great, great fun thing to do last week and it obviously um, was liked by all of you because there were a lot of sets sold and I appreciate that. If you haven't got it yet, it's not too late to get it in before Christmas. So well, we, have we have a lot of them on here saying they hope Santa knows 
that their list includes templates this year. Yes. Because their lists are getting longer yes. and longer. Yes. And if you need Santa to be reminded, you send me the list, and I'll be Mrs. Claus, and I'll send him an email. And I'm serious about that. So you can send me a list, and we'll see what we can do. All right, so those are the two that we're not going to use. This is the continuous hearts. This is half of the continuous loop. And then this is the continuous loop here. And so we're going to get started on our project. And as I said, it is a pattern that I developed. And so we have this pattern that's the octagon. Now, when I show you mine tonight, these are all solid squares. And I put this whole thing together in about an hour and a half after I got, or that was cutting my stuff out. And so I'm not going to be talking about that. You can get the pattern. But this has instructions for optional sizes. So you could use any size of block here, and it's going to tell you how you can adapt this. So if you had a table that you wanted it smaller or larger, it tells you how to adapt. And on the back, there's another pattern. It's an Eleanor Burns pattern. This was a customer of mine that made this particular one, and she had adapted it to fit to her octagon table, which not many people have one of those, but she had one of those. So this is available so that you can know how much to get for your fabric, and if you want to do this pattern, it's in there. And you can see the star that ends up in the middle. I've just used solid blocks because I wanted to focus on the quilting for tonight. So I do, we do have some confusion about the set. A lot of them are thinking it's from DM Quilt, and this is actually the Westerly sample border set, correct? Yeah, I don't know why you would think it would be from DM Quilting. I'm a bit confused on that, but um, DM Quilting is a, a designer. That's Donna McCauley. She is a designer for Westerly, but that is not her set. This is a set that was designed by Leone. Uh, West, who is the originator of the templates. So it's the border sampler set. So um, it should be set very easy to find on there. Just put in border sampler set on the Sew Steady site. And again, please click, click on that grocery cart so that um, the, that gets credited to us. I appreciate that. Um, we are going to work with the center and this is my center block. I'll kind of try and show you this so that you can see what we've got here. This is the octagon and it's all pieced together. And so I want to tell you how I have set this up to get it ready to go because you notice I do have a few pins in here. So I'm going to bring this to the edge and I'm going to ask you, Megan, to go around and push that back a little bit. You may have to go in there. I've got a piece that's kind of inhibiting that'll fall forward if it's not open there we go got to have plenty of room and so what I've done is I have my backing piece I haven't even cut off the selvage because this is gonna again like I do pull this around to the front not that wide it'll only be three quarters but then I'm using fusible fleece tonight I like that on my table toppers and my placemats and things my candle mats because it gives it a little bit more body than the batting does. If you wanted it thicker, you could just use two layers of this. Now what I did is I fused, this is the fusible side, I fused it just in the center to my backing. So you can see this isn't fused right here, and that's going to be just fine. And then I spray basted my topper to the back of that fusible. So everything is fused and spray basted, I guess is the best way to say it. And then all of my blocks, before I start, I actually spray them with spray starch and I use the either best press or the, um, tell me what, basting spray, no? June Taylor's. Yeah, June Taylor's uh, spray. And I um, use that on my fabrics because when you're using this is a bias right here you do not want that piece to stretch at all so before you actually cut this this was a square it was definitely and I'm going to just say starch but it's not with Ni Niagara starch it's just using the starch alternatives 
and then I cut those. So I don't want those to do any stretching because that's what gives you this wonkiness down here. If you just go ahead and cut that and this stretches, then when you put this on, it gets larger and then everything is out of whack. So I'm gonna start in the middle only because that's what makes sense on this. And so as you saw me do a couple of weeks ago, or I guess it was last week, I never know. I am using, um, the big wonder clips and they're just called the jumbo clips because they have i hate to say it this way they have a big mouth and so underneath here or back here at the back i can just clip that like that and go to the other end and this is about 34 by 36 so i really only need three on that side and you can see i've got them all clipped in there now, Megan, over there in that drawer, there are some more jumbo clips. I'm out of them over here, but I need some more because... So I'm gonna come to the opposite side, and mainly this is just so nothing gets caught or catches on my machine. It's really got nothing to do with my quilting, but it's just so it... One side says top on it. So I've got some of my little ones and my big ones in the same one. So I don't want them all falling out here. So these are the jumbo size. There are th like three or four sizes. And I really had not come into a need for the jumbos, and now I use them all the time, even on smaller projects than this, and bigger projects, because like I said, they've got that big mouth in them. And that way you're not having to use pens or something like that. So we are going to come into the middle here. Do we have a question, comment? We do. Some of our international people want to know, can they get this pattern in a PDF file? You know what? I'm going to work that out. I don't have anything yet on di for digital, but I will work that out. So if you want it, then you're just going to need to email me and we'll get that to you because I know that's an issue for some of you. So great question. Um, that will be able to be worked out, I'm sure. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is, I am going to use my large eight point crosshair grid. And I am going to first start by not just guessing at this, I am going to make sure that I have got this so that I am dead center. Because when you start with these blocks, Guessing and whatever is not a good thing. So I am taking the corners over here and over here and making sure they go through the intersections there. And the same thing back here and over here. And you just kind of want to juggle that back and forth. And the reason I like the bigger one for this is because it's going to extend past my corners and it just makes it easier to line things up. So I'm carefully moving that. And why I was talking about the starch is because of the fact that I am going to be making lines on this lighter color fabric, I'm gonna be using some of my Frixon markers. And so I want it to be able to come out without leaving any ghosting, and it will work just fine if I do that. So now you can see that I have got my eight points on there. And if I want to check it, that's where I love, love, love this centering ruler, is I can come in here and set it on center and I can look out and see, do I have it centered? And it's four and a half and four and a half, so we're good to go that way. Let's test it the other way looks good because I don't want to get the spokes of what I'm going to be doing in like over here be an inch in and over there be like three-fourths because it's going to be very very noticeable so you want to take that into consideration now this is a border tool okay 
I'll put it out there so you can see it. That is part of my rope templates. This is the one that comes in the continuous border. I have the whole rope set because I love the rope. It's easy to do. We're gonna do it here in the borders. But for today, I am not doing this as the rope. I'm gonna do it as a flower. And if you were with me, I don't know, four or five months ago, I did this same thing. So the first one I'm gonna do, and I always have to look at this, is I am going to be doing this. Megan, I need my design showing over there. I'll have to look at my handout. I'm gonna be doing this so that this piece goes up. So the point goes up on this. So I'm gonna to come to the middle and just for information, I am using here a, let's see what thread, a Floriani embroidery thread that is 35 weight. I still have my 90 top stitch needle in. I am going dead center, pulling up that thread. And on the bobbin, I have used a 40 weight polyester thread that matches this. And that's probably what I'm going to do throughout. Now, Megan, I think I've got the wrong color. Weren't we gonna use green on this? We were gonna use green on the red part. So, thank goodness I figured that out before we got started. So, I'm actually using the same thread, only in green. Do you know where that got? No, I'm not. I am using YLI machine quilting thread. And this happens to be 100% long staple cotton. And it is a 40 weight. I'm still gonna use the same thread on the bottom. Boy, I would have hated to do that. And then look back and say, oh, I wanted to use green there. So we're gonna put that foot back down. And I've already pulled up the bobbin thread, so I don't have to do that. And I always do this and forget, so we'll just open up the gate. And remember, I want this to go. How you slice it and dice it. Can't seem to get this headed the right way. There we go. I did have it on correctly. Okay. So I am using this for two of them this way and then two others the other way. Now this is going to be so that it almost stitches right here in the middle. Now I'm gonna to have to get my head right around here. And I'm going to be lining up This one is called center block on your handout. And I'm gonna to move to the next one. And the way I've got it, it's upside down on this side and there is a spot right here that's called B1. And I am going to get a ruler sticker because that way, the next time I go to line it up, I won't be back and forth in it. So I'm gonna take that ruler sticker, which if you haven't been with us for a couple of weeks, are now available on the Sew Study site. So there's my ruler sticker. I'm putting that right on that line. Well, great. My bobbin thread evidently didn't like this. So 
So ask me some questions while I'm taking care of this issue. Got any questions there, Megan? There are some who are wanting that have mentioned your um, class from last week. So could you tell them a little bit about what we showed them last week, what the templates were? Well, last week was my borders, um, or my background fills, I'm thinking this week, was my background fills templates. And um, we did circles galore. And I have to tell you, it's no farther along than it was at the end of the class last week. Not because I didn't want to have it further along, but I just didn't get back to it. If you want to show them that, because I've got to take this one little bit out, I'll pull this over and you can show them. But they can get to that on your, sh your shopping cart link, right? Yes, you can get to that from that shopping cart link to order those border excuse me, background fills. So while I'm fixing this part, Megan's going to show you what we did. So she started with the background. We quilted the background with her new background fills circles. And then we used the circle sewing tool and did some circle sewing to embellish it and make it fun. So it is a lot of fun. It goes real fast. And I've shown this to several people that have dropped by my studio this week. And they're like, are you serious? You did all of that? I said, oh yeah, it's really easy. And of course they're like, yeah, you do that all the time. You always say it's easy. And I think any of you that have tried it know that it is really easy and remember we have a lot of specials going on right now with the tables and if you want to get the circles the universal circles and straights tool you can use that on any machine or any table and you don't have to have the holes in your table and it looks like what my issue is right here is i needed to adjust my tension and i forgot to do that so what i am doing is there wasn't enough here to worry with, so I'm just taking it all out because it comes out real easy. And I will tell you, when you're taking things out, if you have a better size stitch, and that doesn't sound right, but if you have a stitch that you know is kind of like the normal 2.4 or 2.5 length, you're gonna be able to just go right underneath and lift that stitch. Somebody asked about the outer rim tool. I know you're going to get to it later, uh, but I just wanted to show it here what it looks like. We're going to be talking about that later. And then there was another question about the mat that's on under here. We've got some new people who didn't know about our uh, grid glider mat. Okay, so I'm not going to move this, but there's one right over there that you can get and bring around here. Okay. And um, there's one either in a tube or on the machine, or both because I keep them on all my machines. But back to ripping this out, um, this is something that makes it, you know, if you've got your stitches so that you can just slide your um, seam ripper under, and if you don't have a good seam ripper, that's something else I would recommend you put on your Christmas wish for Santa. And I was serious, if you have a wish list, you send me Santa's email and you send me the list and I'll play Mrs. Claus. I love that. So that right there is a grid glider. And that is what we use it on the machine. And you'll see that the hole is open there enough that the feed teeth can be exposed through there. And there's different kind of gliders. Uh, you like this one the best because it has all the lines that you can use for all sorts of sewing. But we also have, and I think it's right over there, we have one that's just a solid, it's just the solid green and has a small hole. It's in the tube, Megan. You may not be there, I don't know. Sorry, you guys, I just treat you like you're right here with me in the, in the sewing room. Because you are. So this is what it looks like if you were using, um, just the solid mat. 
Now I'm going to show you something. You may have one of these and maybe you haven't ever known what to do with it, but they're no longer made by Ginger, but there's somebody out there and I'll have to find out who it is and let you know. But this has at the bottom, it has like, they're almost razor blade sharp, but it's like a, a tweezer, but it's razor blade sharp and it has like an awe pick on the other end. And the thing that's cool about it is you can see my threads down here and I can just start grabbing those with that pick and it just gets them all it's just enough strength to pull them through and make it easy, and yet it's not grabbing at your fabric. And I use that all the time if I have to pick out threads here, but more importantly, it's great if you're doing embroidery and you need to pick out some embroidery threads. It just makes it so much easier. And then I just use my lint roller and pull them off. So we're back to square one. I lowered my tension. I think we're gonna be good this time. And so we're gonna give this a whirl again. And so it's gonna look like this. That's what I'm lining up. So I'm coming in here to the middle. I'm gonna put my foot down dead center, needle down, and I'm just far enough away, there we go. Needle up, foot up, and I'm pulling up that bobbin thread. Now that's where I need to get my tweezers to get a hold of it and get that pulled out. All right, we're gonna seat it right around here and right there was my line, is my line. Okay. I go up to the next line and line up here. And I don't like the sound of that. Well, well, well. We're gonna go on, but. Can one know where we are located? I don't know if we've ever actually told them where we're at. We're in Indiana, right smack in the middle, close to the center. Marion, Indiana. Okay, that was a brand new needle, so I'm not going to say that that's the issue, but... I am gonna get a different thread, and we're gonna go with that. And rather than make you wait again, I'll take it out later. Although you probably are patient enough, you would wait on me. said they're all coming over now so <laughs> are they okay well good we need a party we need a party so after that little fiasco we're gonna change the needle because we've got to it kind of let us know that so So I'm gonna to need to test my machine here before I take back onto this. I hope we don't have to move. To a different machine. But that will attest to the power, that's for sure. Let's see what we got here. Lily 
Kelly wants to know what size and type of needle do you usually use? 90 top stitch. That 100% cotton thread was not liking it, not having it. And I don't know what the situ was, but this is working much better. The tension looks great and it's at normal like it usually is. So that is a good thing. So I think we'll be good to go. And just because I haven't gone very far, Megan, if you don't mind, give a little show and tell again and I'm gonna rip this out. So, what am I show and tell Well, about? show them the bibs we did a couple of weeks ago. And then I'm gonna show you an upcoming class and that will um, be something that will be in the university. I'm hoping that Megan and I can tape, tape it this week. If you're not familiar with the university, the university is um, on the So Steady website, and it's where you can take classes. Some are free, some are paid for. And the Christmas project that I want you to show is, I believe, it's on that blue hanger right there, and you should be able to find it in there. Yeah, that one? one. That one. That's it. And this is a project that we're hoping to tape this week that will be available very shortly. It doesn't have to be Christmas. Mine is in Christmas colors, so that's why she's showing that. Somebody asked if we're going to Florida next weekend. No, unfortunately, we're not. That's not the class we're doing, but that's that Bethlehem Star that I was telling you about we did, oh, probably three or four months ago with the outer rim tool. So the, the one that's over there is the Templey Project. That's the one that we're getting ready to do. So that's the Bethlehem Star there that I think we called Stargazing. And then this is the Templey project that it's even prettier in person. And you can see that it's uh, got options that you could cut more out than that. When I got to that point, that's where I liked it. So I stopped. Gail said she did the bibs for some of, I think a, maybe it's a grandson maybe or for She's really excited and she was proud of how well she did on that. Those bibs are really easy and um, the thing that's nice about them is the way you make them, you're going to be able to just use a pinking shears on the outside edge and that way you don't have to do any turning or anything like that and it just makes it so they're kind of the rag quilt look. Some of you are asking about the um, Bethlehem Star and what we used. We actually did that as a Facebook Live. So it's back here in the archives um, of So Steady. It's also on our Facebook, um, not Facebook, excuse me, our YouTube, YouTube channel. Donnell's got a new YouTube channel. Um, if you're not subscribing to that, you can. It is Templey Quilting with Donnell McAdams. And that one's already up, isn't it? And that it? one is already up. So you can go back and watch that and that would also teach you more about the outer rim tool and it was a lot of fun to do it's only straight stitching with a straight ruler but you can do so much with that now i'm almost finished here but i'm sure she's got a few more things that she can show here's some more christmas and this pattern is also available on sew study site so you can get this it's called trim the table and that's available from So Steady. And I also have a new one that's supposed to be out this week called Woven Circles. It'll be another circle sewing project. Some of you have seen it um, but, and maybe have wanted to do it. So that one's gonna be available soon too. A lot of things coming out now. Great for the holiday season, can be done in any colors. But, you know, it's kind of fun when it's holidays to do things in the holiday colors. Megan said to me earlier as we get, were getting ready for this, she said, are we going to have enough room in the house to display all these things? And I'm like, well, I hadn't thought of it from that angle. So, so Judy asked, is the shopping link on here the same as the one on the shopping cart? Yes, Judy, it is. I had a couple people ask if I could just pin it to there. 
And so it is pinned, that shopping link that is pinned is the exact same as if you click on the link on Donnell's handout. I made it easy, guys. I'm looking for your other template. Show the buttons and bows. You might can get that one out. It's, it was one we did that people have asked about several times, too. I love the buttons and bows one. That was a two-part where we constructed one week, and it's three-dimensional, so you have um, dimension. Guys, she's asking me to dig really deep in our stores. It's kind of hard, but she's organized, so I found it. So show them the dimension part right here. And then on that, we use the circle tool to sew our perfect circles around our bows and this one is also up on our youtube channel so there's plenty of projects out there um and if there's one that you know you absolutely if there's i guess how to say it is like today we gave you a handout it's not like a full-fledged handout but something that gives you information if uh you need something like that when you're on the youtube channel you can just you know send us a message there it's easier if you send it from there because then when I get the link I know that you're watching and uh, what you're watching there and I'll understand what you're talking about this is a table mat you did with your um, new background fills I'm about ready guys I am so sorry, but you've gotten a little sneak peek, or not sneak peek, but a little show Review. and tell. All I right. need to flip this over and look to see if I've got everything off, because I don't want to catch any threads. Got one long one there. So you, some of you are asking for the YouTube link. I will go find it as soon as... Donnell's up and running again. You just go again. to YouTube and do all things... What? No, I'm nope. sorry. Templey quilting, or not Templey, Templet. Woo, I'm losing it. I'll find the link for y'all. <laughs> All right, third time's a charm. We're gonna hope and pray and pray and hope. And now I just gotta find my template again since I've moved it all over the place. Can you? This one? It's my big bow. <laughs> yeah, so much fun. Here we go. So by now you're probably wondering where in the world the lines are. <laughs> Me too. Now. is the fabric line that you're using is that a current line I don't even know if you know what line it oh, is. oh heavens I don't know I think this might be a fairy frost the background there so I don't know that it is now I'm noticing and I'm glad I've just now checked it with my picture so follow what I'm doing here because you might want to write this part down so I am going to talk my way through it again so hopefully this time everything goes good. So the way I'm doing this is this time I'm actually not lining up anything. I am lining it up so that this side right here is parallel with my drawn line. And I know that's getting really light, but it's right there. And so this is going to stitch right on that. And so I'm going to round that. And this time I'm moving this one up to the line. So that line that's right there, that's what I'm gonna follow. So I've got it right along that. Thank you. 
And then I am going to be flipping this whole template. So I'm taking this out and I'm flipping it over and putting my puzzle piece back in. Got to remember which way it goes. There we go. And then I'm going to do this parallel. So my arrow is on the other side. I'm looking at this being parallel right there, so it's going to stitch right on that line. Oh, you guys. I really don't know what the situation is. But guess what? I'm not taking it out. Just gonna go with it. They all feel your pain. They've had days like this too. I was looking to see if it was getting hung up on something in the back, and that doesn't appear to be the issue. Someone suggests I go get you some wine. Unfortunately, well, that's not going to work. I am not one who drinks, so... However, I, this might make you start tonight. Well, you never know. Okay, and so I was successful in that. So all I'm going to do is rotate the whole business around. And I'm going to repeat the same thing. And so since this one was on that quadrant, it'll be fine to just leave it in here and go to this quadrant and repeat the same process. Now I got a thread that's getting caught. I'm moving up and lining that up. thread from out underneath there. And then all I'm going to have to do is flip this over and do the last two. We thought we'd never get there, didn't we? Oh, Patsy suggests chocolate. Maybe I should go find you some of that. Maybe that will help. <laughs> I can agree to that. Okay, so there we are. And just because I want you to realize that this can be matched up by using my spacing gauge, I'm just making sure that that distance is a quarter of an inch so that when I go out around here, it will come right back and be right on top of that line. And then I'm going out to here. That can't be. Because that would go over. Where's my line? It 
it must be today because some of them are telling us that they've broken three needles today or they had to um, re-thread several times. So it must just be today. Well, yesterday was the 13th, so maybe it's carryover from Friday the 13th. So anyway, the design that we just did, I don't know where my handout's gotten to, but it's the one that's called the center block. And I know you can't really see it here, so it's probably easier that you could see it there. And it looks like this, okay? And I'm gonna tell you what I just realized, and that is it's because I offset my drawing that I was having trouble lining that up there and it's fine but what you're actually going to do when you look at this picture right here is if I use my mini crosshairs well I'll just use this eight inch one instead of it being straight like this it was actually like that. That's why I was having trouble with it. So it's using one of these and then these two lines to line up. So that's why I was having trouble. So over here on the side, you may want to draw so that you can see, I'm definitely gonna draw it for my sake for referencing the next time, so that it's like this. So that's the way it is. It's offset. So this would be the straight up and down, but these are the ones that you're using. So that's why I was having trouble with that. So I'll remember that on this one because this is the next one. And because that thread was giving me fits, I'm not using it. I am going to get a different one and we will use that. So maybe everybody will be just a little happier. Some of you are saying, I bet she takes that out again. And I'm going to tell you, you would be right. I will take it out again. But not for you to wait. What size is that block that you just did? It can be any size. In this case, it is finish nine. But it can be any size because that's the way the pattern's written that you can do anything. All right, so now we are going to be doing the one that says triangles, okay? So we are going to use that crosshair square again. And instead of using this like this, we are going to be using it like that. So I am going to get that centered down here. I'm gonna to need to take this pen out. Get it over here where y'all can see it. And for me to get a reference on it, I am going to need to draw this line. So again, I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm gonna put it in the middle, and I'm gonna see, does it come? Yeah, it would, because I, this one ends about a quarter of an inch. So we're good there. And so that's our reference line, but we're not, we're not doing it this way. We're doing it this way. Put this down here. Am I in the screen there? Yeah, Abby, can we scoot it up? We can. So I'm just putting that on that line right there. And then these lines will be right on my seam. And I'm going to use that line and that line. And I'm just doing this so you'll be able to see it better. Okay, because that is good and dark. And so what took us, I don't know, three and a half hours to do, shouldn't have, should be able to do this fairly quickly. So I'm going to set this up. And 
get my thread up. And for those of you that are beginners, or maybe you've been listening to me teach um, on some of the um, events that I've been doing, and I talk about using, you know, 100% cotton thread, and sometimes it gives you fits, and you know, this, that, and the other. This is obviously a great example of that situation, because this is polyester thread, and I bet I won't have one issue with it. So I'm setting that there. You can see my B out here where I've got that, and I'm lining that up. This is still right along there where I want to measure because I don't want that stitching in my green area. So I want it to go right in that seam allowance. So I'm measuring that so that I can get that right in that seam allowance. You guys that have sewn for a number of years, you know what it's like when you feel the feel. This just feels so much better. Now I've gone back there and I moved that so it's lined up with that line. Now if I was doing what I did a while ago, then I would flip to this quadrant down here and do these two. But we're not doing that, so we're going to be turning our template over. Question? Yeah, so Linda wants to know, the offset eight point crosshair ruler is the same setup for both of these blocks. So for the big block. That is correct, and yes. For this one. For okay. this one right here. Thank you for asking that. Perfect question. And I'm just upset that I didn't figure that out sooner, even after three times. It took me figuring out, and I'll tell you what made me realize it was when I got things lined up, it was sticking off into the other square. And I knew that wasn't right. Sandy also wants to know, are there two different pounces for iron off and regular? Yes, there are. Yes, there so are. So she needs to order the iron off. Right. Okay. So I'm gonna come in here now and I'm gonna pull this up because I'm gonna show you how to bury these threads. So I'm gonna put that foot down, needle down, bring up my bobbin thread from the bottom and pull it out. So what I'm pulling out there, as you can see, is the bobbin thread. So when I cut that, I'm just gonna cut it so one stays up and one goes back down. I cut my needle thread, I just go underneath and you can see a thread pulling. And so I'm pulling that back through and I'll tell you what happened to me yesterday and I think it almost happened to me there is I pulled a thread back down that I didn't want to. So then I had to go to the back and bring it back to the front. So that might have just happened again. Couldn't get that to happen if I really wanted to. So let's see what I got here. And maybe I can just bring it back up. We have a few of them that even say your machine sounds better. I know, <laughs> as you guys, you guys even can tell it. Okay, so I'm gonna have to bring that one back up to the front, but that's not a big deal. It's just that it went bye-bye when it shouldn't have. Make sure I get the right one. Okay, so this is the one that has to come to the front. And I am using my cinch side threading needle. So it comes right through there. I'm bringing it back up. Now I could bring all the top to the back. It really doesn't matter. The job's gonna get completed either way. And so there's my threads. I'm gonna take all of them, loop them through. And then I'm gonna take the point of this and put it maybe over to the side, just stick it into the fabric. And if you can see that there, I'm coming down so that I'm pulling that knot down my needle and then I let go of it. And the knot is clear out here. And so what I'm gonna do is thread them back through that side threading needle and then I'm just gonna come right back in the middle and come out and bury all those threads and the knot because the knot wasn't right there on the surface of the fabric, it will bury. So I've already pulled it right through there. Is my iron warmed up, Megan? Oh yeah, it's Okay, warm. so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this so that you can see it. I'm gonna do one more of these triangles because I wanna explain that again. So we're gonna set this over here but I want you to be able to see it without all of that chalk. 
I just love that chalk. All right, so there's what it looks like. I actually like that better than I think I would have liked the green. And so I'm gonna show you the back so that you can see maybe there what we've got. And we're gonna to go to another corner here. So we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna un unclip it a bit just to turn it back. And these will go very quickly once you have figured out that you have to mark a different way. So I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna come from the center down and I'm just using math, and I hate to say that because sometimes quilters run when I say it, but that's a straight point right there, and if I just line the edge right up with that, then as I mark, this should come right down this center, and I'm not even gonna say that it doesn't because math tells me that it will. And so then I'm going to use my crosshair, and remember I'm offsetting it, so I'm coming right down to that point, and all I need to draw is really out here. So again, it's offset. I'm going to get my template, and the way I've got mine marked is I just went to B1 and put an arrow right there, okay? And so you can figure out, you're gonna be upside down half the time anyway. That didn't sound encouraging, did it? But you're gonna be upside down, so it won't really matter. And I'm gonna pull this up. Now this time, because I did not use my cutter, I've got a long thread. So when I floss underneath there, you can see I'm bringing out a long thread. Come back to that very spot, put your template in place. Oh, I love it when things come together. And when you're down here, you're gonna be using that, am I on the wrong side? Yeah, I gotta go over here. Cause you gotta have the long side. One side's longer than the other. So I guess, got the other one done with that mark, but maybe it's cause it was upside down. I'm gonna mark it at A. I'm gonna tell you guys, scribble it out on your, on your paperwork there. There's actually right over here, there's an etching at A. That's your lineup. So right we have there. some very observant people on. And I did what wrong? No, you did nothing wrong. They want to know why your crosshair square grid up. Sorry, I said that so wrong. Your crosshair has a black frame around it. Mine has a black frame around because they used to come that way. And especially for those of us that travel with them, that's the way we got them because it made them a little bit sturdier. But they don't come that way anymore because it makes them too heavy to ship and whatever. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're out there, I have this template so you know exactly. You might even want to take a screenshot of this. I don't care. I have it so it's upside down. And I have right out here by A is where my mark is and that's my first petal on the left. There would then be that quarter of an inch right here, and I am going to now move my project so that you can see that I'm taking this out here and I'm lining that up with my line. So if my line went on out there, and you can see I have less than a quarter of an inch there, and that's how I knew something wasn't right because I was over here and had this big old space. And I was like, I can't, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna have to take that out. But this is very easy to follow. So the template itself, when you're starting, once you got it started, you're gonna figure it out. When you're starting, the template itself is on the wrong side and out at A is where you're gonna put your uh, marker and at B1 is where the foot goes. You wanna take a picture of this, Megan, and then maybe we can throw that up there and um, I may just add this picture right like this 
to that handout and you can pre reprint like the last page or something. Well, you're all just gonna watch me do it. How's that? Now, I don't have much option but to simply turn this whole template over because although it looks like it's exactly a mirror image, it's obviously not. So now I'm still back at B1. I'm out here with my ruler foot, um, excuse me, my ruler sticker upside down, but I can still see it and I've got my quarter of an inch here. back to the center. I'll rotate this a little bit so that maybe you can see back underneath my machine back over here. So they line up on A and not B1. B1 is where the foot is and A is where the line is out here where I'm pointing back in underneath where you can't really see. I'll turn it this way right there. That is A. B1 and A. You might even want to just draw that on your picture because that's how easy it is to do those triangles. So now it's a matter of needle up, foot up, come back through here, foot down, needle down, needle up. Oops, that might not be good. And now we can just pull that bobbin thread up through there and you can knot it. Now I'm not going to do that this time because I want to get on to what we're going to do in the other blocks because that's purely exciting. Megan saw it today and she goes, oh wow. So staying up late was a lot of fun in a lot of ways. So that's how we do the corner triangles. And then we're going to work in these blocks here. Now the reason I didn't do any um, patchworking in this is because like I said, I wanted this to show off my template quilting. So what I'm going to do here, I've got a little thread that I need to trim, so I need to get something really fine and small. There we go. And on this, again, I need to find the exact center of this block. So when I do this particular one, it might be a little bit of a guess as to whether that's exactly centered there. So that's why I like to use my large one. That's, a, that's okay. And so I'm coming here And again, I'm gonna center here and here and here. And because I have marks on here, this is a nine inch block. So it should be pretty well easy to line up around there to get it so that it's good and centered. All right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and some of this, this is gonna scare you guys to death but I'm gonna use a marker. But don't worry, you spray. I've sprayed it twice, if not four times. So here's my center. And the tool that I'm gonna use, or the template that I'm gonna use, is gonna shock you because it is nowhere near designed to do this. I'm gonna take this off and show you on my black fabric what it's supposed to do, and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it. So, I'm gonna draw another line on here. And, again, this is one that's easy, easy, easy. And you can build this one. This can become an all over, actually. So I've got my straight line down here on the bottom. This is what the template looks like, almost like one of those fish. And I'm gonna put my needle down. And I'm simply gonna go around. So 
Slide to the side. Slide to the side. Slide to the side. Again, there are etchings, depending on which way you can go on whatever you're doing to line you up. Sounds like we're doing that dance. I can't think what it's called now, but that they do at weddings, slide to oh, the left. Slide not to the right. right. <laughs> so after you've done two or three of them, you can see that this just gives you repetition. It's like, well, who knows exactly where it starts or stops. So cool border, obviously you can come back and you could stack these going the other way. And there is not actually a straight side on it. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I, you're fine. So we're going to do this totally different. Yeah, somebody said it looks like ribbon candy. Yep. Without the, like, echoes or whatever. So we're going to come in here, and we are going to use this with the point in the center. So I'm going to put my needle down, my needle up. And it's going to be like magic, guys. Just watch. It's so cool. Can you say she's a little bit excited? Oh, I'm, I'm excited about this one. So. so I'm going to get it out of the way, pull it to the back, put this back down, right there in the center, and I'm gonna line up out here. So before when I was doing it, I was going around that way, never stitching the straight side. Now when we do these, we like to do opposites. So I'm going to go clear around to the opposite side. I'm going to look through to the back, make sure it's lined up. Go off to this side. I've got a line right here. And it's not a surprise to you guys because you have a picture of what it looks like. But I think it just turns out so cool. You kind of want to practice this one because otherwise when you get right here it can be a little bit of a jolt. Now this is pretty just like that, but it is so much more intricate when I do the others. Now for those of you that are wondering, could you turn this all around? Yeah, you can but it's usually easier to take just a second and try and line it up through looking at the back because then that way you don't have to turn everything. It's, What's it actually called? It's called a continuous loop, but the other one's called continuous too. So I'm not sure, you know, it's part of the, obviously part of the sampler set. The border. The border sampler set, yes. The border sampler set. All right. I'm just going to cut this from the top and then reach down below and cut it and I'll bring the other one up later. I say, there we go. So you can see now 
what that looks like. I just love it. I just love this one. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to take these to the back and get rid of them. Oh, you're getting lots of love and hearts on this one. I do. I love it. I just I think it even has kind of a Christmas look to it, and so I, I really like this one. Now, what I'm going to do next is I am going to show you, I'm not going to stick any pen through the center, but I need a pen to rotate my tool. So I am going to be using that outer rim tool. So I'm taking my tape, and I'm going to turn this to make sure I got it dead center north and south, east and west, and I taped my thumbtack on there. And now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to put this on. And this is the outer this rim. This is the outer rim tool. And I need to get my drawing over here to make sure because I did not write it down. I thought it was eight. So what I'm going to be doing is I am going to take my crosshair tool and put that on there and I am now going to get a different color of marker because I don't want to get confused with this. Do you have any more fine line? I like my fine line the best. There's one right there. It's green. It's under that, yeah. It's under that stuff. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this because I need the lines between. So right between here is where I need my lines. So I've lined up with the rotation. Am I in their way? No, I'm just gonna move this just a smidge so they can see you better. There you go. And so I need this line out here, this one, all eight of them. But you're just marking like the tips of them, right? Yeah, I don't have to come in any farther, okay? And you may not be able to see those lines, but they are there. And then I'm using the straight edge. And those of you that have been with me before know that when I use my tools, if I mark them, excuse me, right here, this is the straight edge that I'm using. And so I put an arrow here that these are the numbers. And so, well, okay. So what I'm going to do is the 8 is where I need to mark. So I'm going to put this on the 8. Right there is my 8. And so on my green line, Megan's getting me a different marker so maybe you can see it. I am just simply going to make a mark and you can see that better. So there's my little line there. Now well, I didn't need that when it's on the green lines. How did I do that? Right there. gone okay this line here right there and I'm just extending it so you can see where it goes right here I'm putting am I still in the right view there yep so right there coming out here oh my I can't even see that Coming out here, it's between the open spot. So if you're wondering how I'm keeping check of that, I know it's between the open spot. That line you can see real well. But guess what, because I was on the other side, I got a little bit too far. So it's the bottom line. Oh, that's another one didn't need, Megan. gone. It's this one. And last but not least. Well, yeah. When you said open spots, that helped me. Okay. So I'm going to use the straight edge here. And I just take that little piece and tape it right back to my machine. And I'm coming right down there to know where that spot is. Alright, so why do I need those? 
because I'm going to make a frame around this. And if you don't want to make a frame around it, you obviously don't have to. But I want to show you how that's going to be done. Because I think it's pretty just like it is. But I'm simply going to use a straight edge here. I'm putting the needle down in one of those spots. Bring up my bobbin thread. And then this, I'm going to set here, and I'm going to use this spacing gauge because I want my needle to land right there. So I'm going to set that so that the one side's there, and I'm going to stitch to that spot. I'm going to go this direction, spacing gauge. Remember, it's flat to flat, so this one's going to go kind of a little different angle. This one's going to go straight across, so for me, it's easier to bring it down here to the bottom. The concept is the same. I'm just going to set that there, set that straight. I think I've got a smidge more to go. Nope, just gotta line this up. Ooh, that was a little scary, cause see, I wanna look at this line and see that it's lined up. Come up to here. But I just absolutely love that outer rim tool for marking. And that's the way that star was done. All of those marks were made with that star that way. Now just because I'm out of your view, I'm going to get this turned back around. I'm not left-handed, but in this case it's a little easier to do my left hand. And you can now see why I made a crosshair mark there. No, 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 no! Oh, shoot. fix that later. I'm going to go back and show you how to echo it. But you can see how I'm getting that around there. I'm going to check my bobbin. Still good, still going. Whenever I open that up to look at it, I always re-thread it again just because I don't want to take the chance that I missed something. Yes, this is my grid glider that allows my fabric to slide. I'm going to come right back to where I was because I want to show you how easy it is to echo. So in this case, I'm going to be up just a little bit higher and my foot is going to glide right on that line. So I'm going to be taking that thread and bringing it up. Put that back down right in that same spot. And then you're going to just use the edge of your foot right on that edge there. And you want to get it right on there. Now, you are going to take the time to extend this line so that 
when you come here, you will know where to stop. So those lines need to be extended a bit so that you can come right to that line and stop. Rotate your fabric if you want and then hold that in place and go to the next line. So you are just putting a little frame around the whole thing. That thing looks so cool, I love it. The line I extended would have been the one that came when we drew from the um, crosshair square. Now there's a chance, see that right there? I didn't go far enough. So you wanna go back the other way and come like maybe just one stitch farther. And then it's lined up, whoop, got just a little bit more. Well, I did like three stitches, but it's actually only the increment of one. There we go. So obviously I'm gonna have to fix mine. So I'm just going to stop right there and show you what this looks like because I'm gonna get all of these lines off of here. Anything that I need, I can always put back on. So how do we like that? You like that? I think it's pretty cool. I wish it was finished up, but you can get the idea of it, of what it's gonna look like. So then the last one I'm going to show you, super easy, super simple, save the easiest for last. <laughs> Knock on wood, I'm going to go find wood. Hold on. They are loving it. Lots of hearts and loves coming in for you for the hexagon design. So this one is going to be back with your rope tool. And so what I'm gonna be doing here is, I am going to draw the straight line again, right through here. And so I'm just taking something that is squared up and I'm gonna lay it on that line. And when this comes down straight, I've got my center exact. And we'll see if this shows up here. Oh yeah, you can see that well. Now all I'm gonna do in the center here is go around this. You can either go once dead center in the green or you could do a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch, whatever you want to do. Now I'm gonna tell you when I pieced mine, I pieced just like I've told you guys to do and that is to piece with 60 weight thread so that I don't have heavy seams here. So it's, you know, you're not gonna be crossing those seams anyway, but it alleviates that bulk in there. So either do one straight line around there, or, you know, you can figure out what you want, but that would be the easiest because when you come to this point, you're just gonna turn and go the other way. Now, the way I've done this one is I have, you're gonna be doing two sides this way and two this way. Now, you are going to do one first so that you know how far it is to out there. Now, I could measure. I've got it drawn out, but this is the way you would do it. You are going to either do it on paper or you're going to do it right on your, template, on your fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this edge always up there touching. So when I do that, I've got a line right down here that's right in the center. I also have on here, you can barely see it, but there's a line that goes through the middle and it's right there. And right here. So that is the center line. But if we're gonna just keep this touching up here, 
you know, we really wouldn't need it, but I like to have as many reference points as I possibly can. So I can see that this is an inch and three fourths from my bottom line. So I'm gonna draw that right on there. Inch and three fourths from my bottom line, my bottom edge. So from here, it is an inch and a half. Okay, so now what I'm gonna be doing is, I'm gonna start in the middle by keeping that line. Megan, I need a couple ruler stickers. I'll use this one because I can move it. Because I know you can't see this if I don't put it on here. You want another one? Nope, I'm good. Okay. So those, that's the center line. And I'm going to be on this side, and I'm going to get it all placed where I need it to be. Center line. Yeah, that center line's important. I'm coming right in here. I'm going to put my needle down, my needle up, and my foot up. And because I moved that around so much, I hardly even have a top thread, let alone a bottom thread. So now I got both of them. Needle down. We are going to sew all the way around and back to A1. Move it over and sew it again. So it doesn't really matter which way. A1. Slide this over. There's a stitching line etched on here that you can line up. We've got this line we can line up. We got that line we can line up. And this time all we have to do is sew back to here and stop because we're only making two of these on this side. So that is actually that side finished. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that needle up, bring this back, and I'm just going to cut it underneath, and then I'm going to go over to this side, and I'm going to flip the whole business over just side to side. My A is still right here, only this time it's right side up. I'm going to come into that same spot, needle down, needle up, foot up, pull up my thread, there we go, line up with this line, and again, I'm going around, And I'm gonna go back and stop at A1 right there. And you could almost feel it. It just, you, there's just a place there that's kind of a divot. It's kind of like on that spinning wheels 36. And I move this over, I line up my template, I make sure I've got that in line, and I'm gonna come right back here and stop. So I'm going to pick up my needle, pull that out, oh, not down, up. I have to remember never to lay my scissors on my fabric because then I move my fabric and they fall off the back of my table. All right, so you can see here when I did that, when I go back to measuring over here on this side, it's three-fourths of an inch. Oh, we're lucky. We have got it. So what we would do is then you could draw your center line. You could draw this line, which I ended up drawing mine an inch and three-quarters up from the bottom. And then this line over here, this spot right over here, is three-fourths of an inch in. So you could actually pin that point there so that when, I mean, mark that point there 
so that then you could start on this side and do this and then stop and flip it over and go the other way. It's totally up to you. You can see it is not hard to do it the way I did it. However, if you wanted to do it all in one section, since you're doing eight of these, you could figure out that measuring so that you've got it centered. So while I've got this here, let's just take those lines off and you can see what that one looks like. So we've pretty much covered all of them. I do apologize for what went on there at the beginning, but I guess we all have those issues now and then. So I'm just gonna have Megan see if there's any more questions. I hope you enjoyed this, even though I had some issues. We have some newbies who this is like their first time. And they Whoa! Know if this is their first time or they're really, really new to it, what templates do you suggest they start with? Absolutely get your ruler foot and your straight edge arc that comes with that ruler foot. This is the straight edge arc. I used it to go around this one. And then get the sampler set one. And I would totally encourage you, you're going to be able to watch it either place. Um, you can go on to um, the So Steady website, and I believe we figured out it was March 18th. Mm -hmm. March 18th is when I did the one that was Let's Get Started. And it's going to tell you about all those markers. It's going to tell you about how to get your, your knots tied and that kind of thing. And it's so, so in basic, and that's the whole idea. And what we did tonight, it really isn't hard. This shouldn't have been like this. I had thread issues, no question about that. But I can tell you that once you get started with that Let's Get Started video, you're going to just love this. Just practice, just play. Start out with a small project, just like the little placemats or whatever, and there's plenty of them on there. But I can tell you that you could do this, if you had like a whole day, you could probably do everything on here in a day. And um, I encourage you to get this pattern because it is one of those that is not seasonal in any way, shape, or form. It's fast to put together. And I absolutely love the fact that I've got open spaces here, even though that could be a quilt block, but I've got open spaces there that I can play. And I'm not kidding you, I'm just really in love with what that looks like. I'm envisioning this in Templey Quilting and what this would look like if I had Templey Quilted that, which means I'm cutting out sections. So there's just all kinds of things you can do. Um, start basic, just grow your skills, watch us. Um, Tomorrow at 5, I know Kate Quinn will be on. Um, Donna McCauley's on a Tuesday at 5. That's Eastern time, you guys. And um, Stacy and Mindy are on on Thursday. So we have four nights a week. And those of you that have been with us since the shutdown started back in March, we were doing every day and sometimes twice a day. So lots out there, lots of training. Um, and don't hesitate. Get on the So Steady um, site and also well you're probably there right now but go to the Westerly site that is not a selling site so it is all education you can show pictures of something that you may think something's wrong with and people will answer your questions and whatever so if there aren't any more questions today thank you so much for being patient with me um, thanks for joining us and we're going to play some music and show these up close as we exit out have a great weekend, everyone. Bye now.